I don't know. I'm just awful with it all. Oh, it doesn't stop my chat from calling me a boomer every single day. <laughs> I yeah. If I have my mic muted for more than a second, that's all it takes for a thousand boomer comments to pop. Yeah. up. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, yeah. I'm awful with this stuff. <laughs> and uh, funny you say boomer. That is the original slur everyone was calling me from the on the PewDiePie video. Oh really? Like, okay, boomer. Okay, boomer. Like literally <laughs> loads of comments just that because obviously I'm too old to understand how funny he is. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so why don't we start with what made you want to do that PewDiePie video in the first place before you went uh, bread tube viral, as they say. <laughs> yeah, the king of bread tube two <laughs> times in a week is great. Um, yeah, basically, I think I was just sitting with my brother and we we're talking about YouTube. And I was like, yeah, my YouTube's doing really shit lately. Um, I don't know what to do a video on. He's like, oh, that PewDiePie stuff. And I was like, yeah, but I, I don't really know what to say about it. And then he was like, oh, you should research it some more. So then I just went into it and I knew about the stuff, you know, all the stuff he'd done before. Everyone pretty much does. He's such a big platform, you know, YouTube YouTuber. Yeah. And he's ruined the platform because of, you know, Adpocalypse several times because of him. And I just looked into it more and I was like, okay, I'll whip out my phone. Because the first one, I literally just did one take on my phone. Mm -hmm. And it always seems to be when I do videos on my phone, they do really well. So I oh. put loads of work into editing sometimes, script and editing. It does really rubbish. And then <laughs> I literally whip out my phone for a reaction to like some like Ben Shapiro getting roasted by Andrew Neil. And then it's like 10,000 views. So it's quite, <laughs> it's quite ironic how little effort I actually put into the most um, view videos I have. But yeah, uh, I thought it was like pretty standard. And then, of course, I I, I think it's because it blew up on BreadTube. I got all the hate because. Um, yeah. Gri Gri well, Grizzly yeah, Board just said you're over 2000 upvotes now. Yeah, on, on my second one, and I had one and a half on the first one. Wow. And um, I think this is how this Sinatra found me, because he probably just went on bread He's like, oh, what should I yeah. make a response react to? What should I react to today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And then um, um, and then I think that's where the PewDiePie fans came in as well, because obviously there's the algorithm, but my video was demonetized anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think they found it off bread and they all came. And I, I don't know if it's like the Jordan Peterson thing <laughs> in the sub. Well, I was going to say, to be fair, you did have a Kekistan flag on your thumbnail. Like, <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I defend every bread tuber who gets a shit demonetized, but I think that's TOS. <laughs> I, was, I, I, I was expecting it, to be honest, and I had no time to review it. So it's all, all that sort of thing. But um, yeah, and then I, I, OK, I like making people annoyed. So it wasn't so bad the first time mm -hmm. uh, because uh, if people I don't know if any of people, my subscribers in the chat uh, in the chat but uh, I love winding people up. So the thought of someone watching my content and then write me like a massive paragraph just cracks me up so much. Like I'm so happy my content has wound them up for they to spend like 20 minutes typing on a keyboard. <laughs> um, so I was enjoying that aspect of it, but it felt a bit more um, sinister when that Sinatra guy, uh, he didn't, okay, to his credit, he didn't brigade me because he didn't say, go give this guy a load of hate. He yeah. actually took, he actually, after I think he realized what was happening, he took uh, the link to my video out of his description. Okay. And it sort, so it sort of dried up now because I just get in so many comments. Mm -hmm. So to his credit, I, but maybe he was trying to save his own skin because obviously it's against the YouTube rules, isn't it? You can't start brigading other channels. Yeah. So I guess he didn't want to lose his channel if I turned around and was like, tried to report it or something. Yeah. But, I, don't um, I don't think it was a change of heart or anything. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it, it became quite venomous and it gets a bit old sometimes, but uh, I can see how YouTube is so taxing on people's mental health. You guys wade through the mud a lot more than I do because you go after all these people. <laughs> like, I don't know if there's a person on the right or the far right that you guys haven't covered. And <laughs> I, I would imagine your YouTube comments or some of the stuff. I don't know how much you moderate it, but I guess some of the stuff. I, you I, see I, is I, yeah, awful. I can't. I can't read it. I can't read it. <laughs> I used. Yeah. I used to. At first, when you're starting out, like I, I'm sure you know this, when you get your first kind of like thousand subs or whatever, and you yeah. start getting comments all the time, like, "Ooh, neat! People are saying things about me. I'm so curious what they think." And then, yeah, at this point now, when you just get like thousands of comments, and most of them are just like, "You should get run over," blah blah blah, like all these kind of things. You're like, "Well, there's what, what's the benefit to me to reading these?" Every yeah, day now? yeah, yeah. It's, it's, to me, I don't take it so personally or so seriously. Like, obviously, you get a lot of death threats. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes, okay, maybe I have a bit of dark humor. I find it quite funny. Um, a lot of weird ones. Like I call, I got called um, balding and a midget today, which was a new one. Um, Interesting. I don't know how, how that works since I'm obviously not bald and I'm like six foot two. I don't know if I look <laughs> small in the thing. I get, called, <laughs> I get called fat a ton. Like, 
and like have another burger fatty i get called neck beard all the time which wow. I, doesn't make any sense because obviously I, I, if i had a neck beard i wouldn't be you know, <laughs> people saying that but i don't have a neck beard it's like does it even go on my neck but um <laughs> just dealing with that sort of stuff as a side of youtube i guess you've got to get used to but mm -hmm. the one thing i do like is you don't doubt yourself as much when you're dealing with these people because um yeah but like i say you probably get this as well with the right wing the argument is never too good so you don't feel like oh have i gone wrong maybe that's bad because you don't have as much like real criticism mm -hmm. um so a lot of them soy boy cuck yeah. uh you're actually the nazi not pewdiepie and yeah. It's kind of strange um, with these videos. They just cut them steaming in, like, "How dare you call PewDiePie a Nazi?" When I never actually did that. Mm -hmm. But I think they've gone round all these videos, and like, because we're sort of associating him with the alt right and Nazis, mm -hmm. that's their go-to defense. You can kind of tell they haven't actually watched it yeah. most of the time. But um, in terms I believe that's the, what they call sorry. the straw man. Yeah, I, I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, the fabled straw man. <laughs> So if anyone's watched my video, maybe you saw it on BreadTube, basically one of the big criticisms uh, is my taste in TV and film. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are saying I can't be trusted uh, because I have awful taste in film because someone said they really hate Blade Runner 2049. So I think that just shows how wrong the right wing are. They like an almost perfect movie. Well, but someone also, in our chat um, was calling you out for having a 007 poster. Oh, okay. Well, okay, that, that's fair enough. But they just um, give them away in the movie theater, so <laughs> <laughs> so I just go with a ton of them when I go. But um, so the big one, which was the dumbest one ever, was uh, I have a poster of Man in the High Castle on my wall. It's just over there. Yeah. And it has it doesn't even have a Nazi flag. It has um a cross, and it has um the Statue of Liberty doing uh, a Nazi salute, right? Mm -hmm. And um, they're saying uh because I don't like them calling me out for that, it's the same as the PewDiePie thing. Yeah. And obviously I had to explain, Man the High Castle as a book was an anti-fascist novel mm -hmm. uh, written by Philip K. Dick, who obviously wrote, you know, basically the father of modern sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And um, this TV show literally centers around the resistance, most of them, and, and how awful this world is. It's a dystopian world. Mm -hmm. I have a poster because I like the show. It's not because I have any sympathies to that. Mm -hmm. And maybe if I had a bunch of fans who were all right you could maybe call me out on that like why do you have some sort of nazi imagery on your wall mm -hmm. okay fair enough maybe then but it's not like i have loads of my i wouldn't even say i have fans but loads of my subscribers going around talking about how much they hate jews and stuff pewdiepie mm -hmm. does yes he's had all controversy with with the alt right and the alt right say he's one of them like that if they're saying you know he's part of it even if he's not it shows that he he does enough or doesn't do enough to like get rid of their support because if he really hated them mm -hmm. and really hated you know how awful their ideologies are they wouldn't like him he would have yeah. just stuck with that you know there's problems with the anti defamation league and i'm sure a lot of people in the chat are aware we we don't like the way they smear critics of israel for example like jeremy corbyn and ilhan omar mm -hmm. but let's not pretend pewdiepie cares about palestine or any of these right wingers care about palestine because they don't no so their, their whole argument is like we care about censorship mm -hmm. because they attacked pewdiepie and were happy when disney dropped him mm -hmm. they leave out that they did that because he was making all these anti-semitic jokes yeah and it's not censorship if they're happy yes. someone spreading anti-semitism to young kids mm -hmm. is losing his business business deals and stuff. yes so I, I mean they always leave out it's quite annoying yeah and i mean that's capitalism right <laughs> yeah well, well, so someone someone made an interesting point on the red tube subreddit they were like he might not have started off that way but because of capitalism because of the money he sees the profit in keeping them around and to go against them would be detrimental to his income, so he doesn't do it. So, but that, that if, well, that would presuppose that the majority of his fans happen to be alt writers, and I don't know if that's yeah. true. His, his fan base is too large at this point, like a hundred million. I mean, if there's a hundred million alt writers, we're losing the war. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I guess that's true, but maybe there's a significant amount of them, and the very vocal the, ones for sure. Yeah, yeah. But I guess we have a definition of a different definition of the alt right, and I guess there's some debate. Like in my video, something they also got a bit funny about was I said I at least see Ben Shapiro as a pipeline to the alt-right, if not part of the alt-right himself. Mm -hmm. And they were like, how dare you say that? He's an Orthodox Jew. Yes. Or how can he be part of the alt-right? Yeah. And then in my in my response video, I've, I have put some links to how the alt-right have sort of been having some infighting about whether they really hate Jews or not. And that's where a lot of the split comes from. Okay. It's would they rather have 
I guess, Israelis and Jews who are sympathetic on their side? Mm -hmm. Or do they actually believe Jews run the world? And right. it, it's an interesting debate. Um, also, oh, there's it, a reformation coming then. <laughs> no, but it, it's why a lot of um, hardcore alt-writers hate Donald Trump because he supports Israel so much. Mm -hmm. But there's this divide where a lot of them obviously love Donald Trump and they're part, part of the alt-right and they'll support anything he does. So it's mm -hmm. a sort of little civil war within the alt-right because they can't decide, do we hate Donald Trump because of Jared Kushner, his son-in-law and his support for Israel? Mm -hmm. And do we like all these proper, like real Nazis or do we just accept Donald Trump and accept these sorts of people as part of the alt-right and you see it when they talk about when the white house or is not doing what they want they always blame the globalists as they call them mm -hmm. but they basically mean the jews but yeah. it's just an interesting thing they have going on there mm -hmm. but it, it's uh strange to me uh they you know they can't really even sinatra says their arguments against them not being I, i'm not saying this guy's anti-semitic i don't really know so much about him mm -hmm. but their arguments against uh PewDiePie not at least encouraging and spreading anti-Semitism is that you know this stuff should be a meme and it's funny, right? But it's what, for the my, lulls. My, yeah, but my my point is there is dark humor and I get that, mm -hmm. but maybe um, if you know you're you know he's not some like real edge lord comedian or anything. He's literally a streamer whose fan base contains mostly kids. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know in uh, if you'd feel comfortable making a joke about the holocaust in front of a bunch of nine-year-olds in real life or all this stuff he says i, I doubt <laughs> anyone would like to be that comfortable or uh, he, or yeah. i've really built up the wrong brand <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but he, but he, i guess the the disconnect with the internet he kind of might justify in his mind who am i really streaming to but he obviously knows most of them are young kids yeah so you know, as part of, as far as, you know, he, I don't know what your opinion is. I'd like to know, but sure. I don't think he's necessarily, and I, I wouldn't say he's a Nazi at all. I don't know if he's sympathetic to the alt-right. Mm -hmm. I think following white supremacists on Twitter on top of everything else mm -hmm. is a good indicator. He at least doesn't even understand this or he's kind of sympathetic to it, mm -hmm. but people say he's actually just really stupid and he probably didn't know which i i don't really buy but i'd, I'd be interested to hear what you, you think about oopsie uh, doopsie <laughs> <laughs> um i well okay you pointed out that he was following several right wing figures so we should actually point them out uh, especially yeah. lauren southern and stefan molino yeah. especially right uh those yeah. are the two architects of what we now call the great replacement right which is the the, the theory that that uh, new zealand shooter uh cited multiple times right as well yeah. as other numerous shooters uh, the one that happened recently in the united states too so even if, okay, even if you want to give PewDiePie an unbelievable amount of credit, right? So I think we're being so generous by saying that, okay, well, he's just falling over, constantly falling into these situations that he doesn't know. Um, yeah. That means that he's completely irresponsible to the size of his platform. You know, like I, I have a platform and it's, it's, it's modest, right? There's 260 people watching this right now. If I was to start trying to throw different colored pills down their throats, I am using my platform for that aim, right? So yeah. PewDiePie, not only following these people, but slightly, I'd say tacitly endorsing some of their beliefs. I mean, when it comes to Ben Shapiro, he sends him things like they're friends, they're online friends. Yeah, like he yeah. would send him memes, right? Like there's, you know, Ben Shapiro shows where he's like, oh, PewDiePie just sent me all these memes. And there are funny things that I put on my phone. Um, <laughs> there's definitely a bit of a pipeline there as well right all yeah. that being said even if you want to be as generous as you want for PewDiePie like I totally agreed with you I, I was outraged too when I saw him wearing the Iron Cross even though it's the Georgian Cross like, let's not forget yeah. right so yes he's wearing I'm sure a shirt that's bought in stores everywhere and it's it's popular in metal bands it's popular in skateboarding equipment right all that you should still be aware of the optics of this right and so if yeah. he's just never aware of the optics of this at the very least he's a huge piece of shit like that, yeah. well, that, that's all there is to it. You're a huge piece of shit. That's that's on the very generous end of the spectrum, right? You can go yeah. all the way to the other end if you want, right? Uh, I, I do. I think that he's an active uh, alt writer. No, I don't. Uh, do I think maybe? I mean, I, do you know who John Tron was before Destiny kind of yeah, exposed yeah. John Tron? And, and it he, could he be a similar saying all this alt right stuff. Didn't exactly, he? right? Like uh, very xenophobic views. It could be a similar situation to that, right? If yeah. PewDiePie ever had uh, debated Destiny back in the day, maybe we would have a very different version of PewDiePie we'd all think of him very differently now but it, in my opinion it shouldn't take that like I think yeah, there's yeah. enough right there's enough dog whistle pewdy whistles whatever you want to call them there's been enough of them now at this point to be like uh, like I said at the very least he's a piece of shit and your kids should not be watching him that, that would be yeah, my take yeah yeah
Uh, you make a really good point, especially about the kids. Like, I, I, I'd be really worried having a teenage son right now mm-hmm. because it, it's like I, I, I don't know how old you are. Um, how if, if I can ask how old you are? You, you just, can't. No, I don't want to dox myself. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm in my thirties. We'll say that. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I'm in my twenties. So basically, you, you probably remember this if you, because I know you're a bit of a gamer as well. Yeah. The, the gamer culture used to just be like the wild west, and mm-hmm. you would hear the most absolute worst stuff in maybe like call of duty lobbies grand theft auto lobbies mm-hmm. and as a, as a 12 year old in the golden age of xbox live you're exposed mm-hmm. to some like crap but what mm-hmm. it feels like is that stuff has manifested itself into like an actual entity and it's come online yeah and i think gamer culture itself is completely toxic mm-hmm. and it's such a weird disconnect because I was reading that the gaming industry workers are super diverse in terms of LGBT or just ethnicities and everything or races, mm-hmm. but the people who consume the games, not saying they're all white people, but it's weird the disconnect between having such diverse in you know industry, but they hate diversity in games. It, it could be like a, like a stupidity thing as well. Like I, I made a video about Call of Duty being American propaganda. I got a big pushback, like games aren't political. So you're telling me games, <laughs> games about are CIA, apolitical? Is, yeah, is that what they said? About, but yeah, but even about games about the CIA in the Cold War are <laughs> apolitical, <laughs> and you're playing as the CIA. I don't understand how war is apolitical because it's a video game. But I think this, I think what you see with PewDiePie is that he might have started off with gaming, but I think as this culture, you have gamer gay, and you have the rise of the alt right, which I think spawns out of gaming. Yeah. It's really put these polit- political beliefs, maybe you know he's he's born of this as well these political beliefs that were pushed online and it's basically you know what do young men especially back in the day who Mm. are pretty isolated a lot of them i'm not saying this is true for everyone but social outcasts and stuff used to make up a lot of gamers that's where you know it's where they got a lot of friendship and stuff back in the day Mm -hmm. it's changed completely now yeah i'm talking about the early days and everything but Mm -hmm. it's sort of like from there it's grown and then they all meet online. They got PewDiePie. They have these horrible political political beliefs. Imagine just throwing a bunch of dumb teenagers in a room and asking them to discuss politics. That's basically what you know the gaming and this gaming communities have, have have become. Yep. So, yeah, and it's it's I liked your point as well about uh, the cross. Um, what Sinatra says to me, what he was saying to me is that you don't like being taken out of context. Mm-hmm. I think context is all that matters for the PewDiePie thing. Mm-hmm. Out of context, wearing a Georgian cross uh, is not a problem at all. Mm-hmm. I, I went into the video, I said, it reminds me of the cross of St. John, mm-hmm. which is on the Maltese flag. The, mm-hmm. the St. John's ambulance in England has yep. it as well. Yep. Totally, totally fine. I think even the German military today have an iron cross on them. Mm-hmm. Whatever, it's a cross, who yeah. cares? But the, the thing is, if if you know like you're saying we don't believe he's just oblivious mm-hmm. if you have all these controversies particularly mm-hmm. regarding jews yeah you and I, i'm i'm so skeptical that he chose a jewish charity do you know what i mean like, it feels oh, not wrong to me i, I don't totally think he, i don't think he chose it i think he was advised to do it because it was going to be a good pr move and yeah. i mean and what happened was i think just an outright disaster to do that and then be like i'm going to yeah. rescind this and my reasons for rescinding it as i had no idea who they were so now that i know i don't want to give them the money I was like, what <laughs> that's 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 the recovery yeah. on this what the fuck <laughs> i just can't believe anyone with that much of a you know who's become that successful is just so stupid mm-hmm. how how can you not think the only thing i'm wearing the only mark like it's like me if this was some sort of symbol it's like how can you not be aware of what it is yeah a, a, a cross that looks like an iron cross mm-hmm. which and people made good points in the comments saying it doesn't matter what cross it is the alt-right will take that as a symbol mm-hmm. it's like um that stupid okay sign that white supremacists yes use. yeah or the, that, or the clown that, signs or yeah. drinking milk or all that kind of stuff that's been a thing forever. It, it's yeah. always been a thing. But when you're using it in a certain context, and mm-hmm. like he says, don't take him out of context. I, I'm putting him in context. That's mm-hmm. when it becomes a problem. Because without the context, there isn't a problem. There isn't right. a problem with the cross. I, that's what the massive misinterpretation is. We mm-hmm. don't have a problem with the Georgian cross. It's mm-hmm. on the Georgian flag four times as as long with another cross. Yeah. We ain't got a problem with that either. It's just in the context of who he is, yeah. what he's talking about, and just the whole controversy he's caused himself, it's it's a massive problem. Yeah. And it's like I'm saying, it's it's a dog whistle, even if it's unintentional, because mm-hmm. with the whole context mixed together, yeah. you're basically saying to the all right people, I'm on your side. Mm-hmm. I'm not giving any money to these Jews because mm-hmm. you've put back put a massive backlash against me. Mm-hmm. And my reasons 
for doing it is because apparently I've done more research um, <laughs> and I found out I don't like them. I won't give you any reason, though. I've just done more research. Yeah, yeah. If he came out and said, oh, i got a massive problem, uh, I don't really like the way they view the Palestinians and smear Ilhan Omar and Jeremy Corbyn, I'd be like, that's fine. Yeah. Not like, I, I'm, you know, people think I'm anti-Semitic anyway. I've made horrible jokes. Mm -hmm. I basically will give no reason. I'll just pull a donation because I had a yeah. backlash. Yeah. Instead of being like, I didn't know who they were. <laughs> there was just no way of knowing. How can we yeah. ever find this out? <laughs> so just, yeah, are matter. you now going to make a response to the response? Are you going to do the internet thing where you now debunk Sinatra? Uh, I, I really don't know because he, he spent a lot of, no, he hasn't spent a lot of time in this video. What it looks like is he just watched my video and gave responses, like knee-jerk yes. responses to what I was yeah. saying. That's what it's, that's what it's as, as, as Hassan was proving very, very deeply, he does no research. He has no idea what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. So he was talking, talking about how dumb I was. I'm so dumb. Mm -hmm. When I said that it reminds me of uh, Christians who hate Jews, but love Israel. He mm -hmm. was like, Oh, what the fuck? What is this guy saying? <laughs> Obviously, do you think I'm just going to say that like out of thin air? I'm not just making this up. It's mm -hmm. a thing. Mm -hmm. It's um, Christian Zionism. Yeah. And if he's if he's literally like, I don't understand why he wouldn't just okay. This guy said something weird. I always do this, and I hear something that doesn't sound right. I type it, and I'm like, okay, maybe that's true, but I didn't didn't really sound right. Yeah. So to me, I don't know if it'd be a waste of time. All the I'm chat still... wants you to do a diss track, nonstop diss tracks popping up now. <laughs> <laughs> diss track, uh, that would be funny. I don't know too much about him, um, but I'll, I'll see. I need to watch the rest of the video. It's just so long. It's going to take so much effort on my part. Yeah, he just he's just going through my ten minute video, mate, stretching into thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. So so I'll, I'll see. Um, what what about reaching out to him and doing a debate? I would host it if you wanted. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that. T to be honest. I don't love doing these things because not that I feel like it's a waste of time because it is important to debunk these people mm -hmm. and, and everything. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I just like, I he reminds me of the YouTube commenters. Like I don't really want to take too much notice of it because I just know how wrong he is. Cause yeah. I, I don't really want to engage and give him maybe the satisfaction and his fans like, Oh, you, you got him good. You, you own mm -hmm. that SJW. Yeah. So I'll, I'll see. I'm going to mow over it for the next uh, couple of days and see what I come up with. But also, a, a broader point about alt-right people, I love how none of them really show their faces. Mm -hmm. it, it's like a thing. It, no, I, it I is. They'll, they'll probably say, like, oh, it's because society is so controlled by the Marxists, we can't show our faces. Cause well, we Marxists are... is being generous. You mean the cabal. <laughs> Don't forget about yeah. the cabal. <laughs> but um, it, sort of remind, it, it sort of reminds me that these people... I don't know. Maybe underlying me, they, they sort of know they're wrong. They know their beliefs are just super like awful a lot of them mm -hmm. and the the way i think with him how he tries to appeal to all these people like he doesn't condemn condemn anyone so he was saying when i was saying there's there's uh, pewdiepie fans who are saying anti-semitic stuff he's like are there i didn't see anything all right then i guess that doesn't exist then. case closed but then it <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> then my next video i'm literally giving receipts about ne like people with neo-nazi profile pictures mm -hmm. people literally saying the, Holo the holocaust didn't happen mm -hmm. people saying their problem with the ADL is censorship, mm -hmm. but them having long noses has nothing to do with it. Like crazy stuff like that. Wow. And then because he hasn't seen anything, mm -hmm. to him it's it's not not really a thing. I wouldn't mind debating maybe someone else, but I don't, I don't know how, what the essence of that debate would be. It would be quite a better way, I guess, than me me doing a video and then him doing a video, and mm -hmm. it just seems like a never ending cycle. So yeah, definitely something I'd consider. Were you aware of him before? Because when he followed me, I I actually wrote a message uh to you but i deleted it i was like oh it's probably nothing and uh, then okay that all happened <laughs> <laughs> uh i was aware of him unfortunately from another oh, okay. incident something else he had done to someone else i like today was the first time that i actually sat through more than like five minutes of him yeah and, wow <laughs> i mean they came they come in so many different shapes and forms but like what unites them is just it's like unresearched reactionary childish um and like at least Tim Pool has articles, and and fair enough, they're from dubious sources. A lot of the times, you know, I like I'll, I'll put it into like a cursory Google uh, search, and I'll be like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, that's terrible. But at least yeah. he tries, right? There's there's that yeah. modicum of effort, and a lot of the other people, like we don't get any of that for for his like that was what's so great about that Hassan interview was Hassan had all the receipts. 
right? Like he, he yeah, was just like, yeah. oh, hey, buddy, have you seen this, by the way? Yeah, this is him doing that. Oh, you mean this video here where he's making insanely anti-Semitic remarks and he just calls, you know, the the question gems and all that? Like, have you seen yeah. this, right? And like when it's in front of your face and all of a sudden like you come to terms with it, you're like, holy shit, yeah, I was defending a Nazi, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Well, yeah, for pe- for people like that, I, I just the the power they have, which is annoying, is what I experience is their legions of of uh, followers. Mm-hmm. And for example, obviously, think of his content compared to you know, like your guys' content, right? Think of all the effort you put in, uh, the little skits you do, and everything. Too and much then, effort. We yeah, got, we got to slow down. <laughs> you guys have you guys have forty k about or nearly forty k. He yeah, has 160, yeah, he has 169k. I know. Just sitting in front of a video. I know, Kevin Ackle. Yeah, I, I think yeah. about this every day. I've I've wanted to start a grift for so long now. I was I was talking to Jack Sane about it the other day. I was like, did you want to start like just pretending to be alt writers and see how far we can get a channel going? And then once we amass this 250,000 following, and it took no effort at all, we bread pill all of them simultaneously. And uh, he said he had already done that. He's he's got a a fake character called uh, what is it like Big Big Boy or something, and it's like the avatar is like a stock photo with all the stock photo signs on it of like a man in a suit and then his face is made out of the same man in a suit and then his face is made out of another yeah and like I, I the problem being is that like to get that far you'd have to go down a pretty shitty rabbit hole to do it yeah but I, i'm still so tempted just to be able to use it as a weapon um the, yeah the, the thing the thing is it's just uh, uh like when i see people like dave rubin who i, I like because i watched cyt since about 2011 i was aware of him and he just mm. seemed like a normal guy yeah, and then to see how far he's gone from just like a normal guy to like the probably one of the worst sellouts on the internet. Like, I can't yeah. believe King the of stuff the he let. Yeah, he lets people say to like the stuff he let Ben Shapiro say to his face. Can you, yeah, can you imagine inviting someone on and then still being like sort of matey with them? No, like, I don't know. It, 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 like it's it's really sad. Like, and he was throwing what like high school level homophobia at him, right? Yeah, Where like, your, just, whole, like... your, your whole existence is like. You know, this really bugs this guy. Your whole existence, he thinks you're going to burn in hell for all eternity, mm-hmm. and he's sitting across from you, and you're promoting him, mm-hmm. and that—that's how much you know you don't respect yourself. Mm-hmm. That you know, and that you know, who was that guy? Um, I think you—you you talked to him. Uh, is it that Jesse Lee Peterson? He's super homophobic. Yes. yes. And then he—he he was he afterwards when he realized Dave was gay. He's like mm. screaming about. Oh, that, that, no, 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 that wasn't just Lee Peterson. That was a different oh, okay. uh, political conservative commentator, oh, but right, also right. flipped out, absolutely flipped out at yeah. him for for that very reason. Yeah, that's the thing. I touched his hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was like, really so, funny too. Yeah, you know, we, we talk about like capitalism. Like Dave is obviously sold out. A, a lot, a lot of them have. His is probably one of the worst ones because he he did seem like a like a normal guy for ages mm-hmm. like i watched him i subscribed to ruben report when it was still on tyt i remember it's still in my subscriptions on one of my old accounts mm-hmm. so it's kind of it's kind of sad to see because tyt is not perfect but you know if, if anna kasparian or jenk did that wouldn't it be so weird it would be so bizarre I mean? no i yeah. i completely agree with you yeah but i mean or, that's or, that's that that's who pays his bills right at yeah. the end of the day so i mean you know blatant homophobia directly to his face on his own show is yeah. gonna have to be tolerated as long as he wants those prager you checks to keep coming through <laughs> Yeah, and that that's that, that's the whole thing. These people, like, I don't know what their mental state is. Like Candace Owen and is another one that is awful. Like you must hate yourself, really deep down. <laughs> just to say, like, I, I I can't imagine, especially because my family's Irish and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like if some of them just sold out so bad, and especially at the height of these sort of issues of Ireland, I can't imagine someone in my family do, doing that and you being okay with it. I don't know what Candace Owen's family think of her. You know, I, you know I, have, I, mean? I have no idea, but she's she would be in second place if you were if you were asking me to list the top five gr- grifters. It would probably be Dave Rubin, then Candace Owens. Uh, I don't know though. Like going to Congress and saying like white supremacy, like basically. Yeah, that was thing. that was hilarious. I don't, I don't <laughs> even know. But it, 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 what depresses me, I, I don't know if you find this in your in your normal life. Mm-hmm. There is so many people, probably more like not more people, but m- most people in normal society have no clue about mm-hmm. who we're talking about. No, no, even the big ones, Ben Shapiro in in England, no one knows who these people are. Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, uh, out, outside of our hyper political spheres, yeah. Uh, well, I, I like. The, I would say in my friend group, yes, most of them know about them. But I would say yeah. in like, if I was to ask my parents. Uh, yeah. I would have to describe them for a while before one of them clued in. Eventually, I'd be like, "Oh, that guy! I hate that guy! Oh, he's terrible! Oh no, no, I wouldn't listen to him for a minute." You know, I'm like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, that's Ben Shapiro." 
well yeah I, I guess that there's if you're into maybe philosophy and and politics if you are into it maybe but like most decent people i know who just like decent maybe not even uh, i wouldn't say apolitical they just don't have a clue who these people are especially uh, maybe it's different because you're you're you know a neighbor of america but in britain it was <laughs> funny like andrew neil was basically saying i don't even know who you are ben shapiro you're meant to be this big deal, but I have no clue. That was amazing, country. by the way. <laughs> 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 Who happened to be conservative? Like he was a Thatcherite, wasn't he? He he's hardline Tory, so, so so much so to get to get him being called like leftist by mm-hmm. Ben Shapiro, I think shows you. I, I not that it proves my point, but when I say he's far right, I mm-hmm. think when you're debating one of the most, I guess, public uh, hard right people in Britain. Yeah. And you're calling him a leftist. He's <laughs> you. I think you maybe look at the definition of conservative because I don't think you are one. <laughs> and it's just it's just an interesting dynamic. I, I want to sort of make a video about the differences. I, I think Canada is is probably a lot more similar to Britain in this regard. Well, I mean, have, we do follow the Queen, so we have no yeah, choice yeah. in the matter. <laughs> but just our, po- our political uh, sphere sphere, I guess, because. People, as crazy as people like Boris Johnson are and Jacob Rees-Mogg and Nigel Farage, just don't hold a candle to the, the GOP at all. Yeah. They, they remind me way more of, uh, in a lot of ways, Nancy Pelosi, uh, people like that, just cor- corporatists mm-hmm. who, who maybe pretend they have some social values rather than GOP, just chuck it all out the window. It's like, we're basically just white, the party of white nationalism, deal deal with it. Yeah. And we have been, we have been since, I don't know when you would say, uh, probably like the 50s, uh, when they all switched, no, uh, 60s when they all switched over from the Democrats. Yeah. But um, it's just like in, interesting. Now now it's become out in the open, but they weren't always like that. It's just they pretended they weren't. Mm-hmm. Like Nixon, Reagan, they were never explicitly racist to the public. Well, I know, just... but Nixon in his office was saying the N word and all other kinds of things. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 and he was, and he was firmly anti Semitic. Yeah. Yeah, no, Nixon was probably one of the most racist, but he, he was clever. He, because he's a very good speaker, he he would never ever like imp- even implicitly be racist. Mm-hmm. He, like back then, um, you can obviously tell if you, if you're uh, woke enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, the war on crime he started is yeah. obviously like a response to like the Black Panthers. And yes. uh, when he talked about inner city crime, it's it's about you know camping down on on civil rights and, and black people a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. Reagan was the same war on drugs. Uh, Bush was the same. Uh, both Bushes. So yeah, yeah it, it, but now it's like a party of of white nationalism. It's just an interesting difference between our politics one thing that gives me a bit of hope with this country sometimes is just when someone like ben shapiro comes tries to come here with his grip <laughs> and it's like at the door you're meeting the tor- like hard, hard hard right tory and he's just not letting you in that gives me a tiny tiny bit of hope for this country sometimes that we're not totally insane we are. <laughs> well speaking of totally insane uh before i turn questions over to the audience do yeah. you have any comments on uh boris Boris, Boris yeah. and uh, the UK's inevitable going off the cliff. Mm, yeah, so it, uh, I guess in in America and I guess in Canada, in some regards, because you're seeing you know this horrible. I wouldn't. I, I don't know too much about the Canadian politics, say resurgence, but mm. I know you're getting messed up by your own conservatives at the moment. Yes. And in yeah. power, um, what's it? The Coke, the Coke mayor, his brother got re-elected did he yes uh oh. doug doug ford uh but he's actually been wonderful because he is fucked up so incredibly that he might actually <laughs> hand we, we're in the middle of a federal election right now and in the federal yeah. election we have a conservative leader called andrew Scheer. it looked like he was going to beat trudeau but now the stats are actually showing that trudeau might win a minority for the simple oh, fact man. that doug ford was so toxic for their brand that he's pulling the whole party down with them so oh. um thank you crack cocaine is all i can say <laughs> well yeah in terms of of boris um for you for the non-british uh viewers right now mm-hmm. people used to like boris I, I remember when he was mayor of london um but he because of his whole little little shtick when he's like he's so clumsy has the crazy hair mm-hmm. he speaks really funny people yeah. didn't mind him people didn't he, he, he felt kind of harmless to be honest mm-hmm. obviously super sinister he always had his eyes on the prize um backstabbed davy davy um during the brexit referendum and he just had his book come out talking about how much he backstabbed him mm-hmm. um and it, the whole thing with brexit is boris has been wanted to become prime minister since he was made foreign secretary mm-hmm. in theresa may's government he's just been leading the hard right tories to try and topple her that is actually is what it's been and now they're in power he's succeeded mm-hmm. so yeah boris is is like trump in the sense he lives in some 
delusional, uh, like John Ball Britain, which you know we we you know had essentially this revisionist history that Britain is just so so great empire, World War Two, all, all this crap uh, the Tories have to pedal, and the fact that most of the population in terms of the Brexit supporters are now either okay or happy that Boris Johnson wants to go full steam ahead with no deal Brexit it is crazy and I don't think people understand how damaging this will be to the country because as part of my part-time job I write about uh, like issues of immigration and how the changes are going to really affect our economy Brexit is going to be shit for our economy anyway no deal Brexit is going to be like mental no one knows what's really going to happen are we going to have at Calais, just like loads of trucks all piling up because they can't get through the border because we've changed it. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know what's going to happen. And I've made a video about Ireland and how Boris Johnson is saying, why don't the Republic of Ireland leave the EU and join the UK in some trading block or something? Yeah. He just lives in, in a different world and he shows no consideration for things like Ireland, the Troubles. That, that Yeah, which will think, all be reunited once this happens. Yeah, well, pe people sort of think this stuff is, is over and it could kick off any moment because... The sectarianism is so deep. So, for example, it's uh, 22 years ago since the end of the Troubles, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if you were 19, 18, whatever, 20, you're still relatively young. You could have yeah. been killing British soldiers and or killing um, the IRA if you were part of the Ulster Unionists or the British Army or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're still relatively young and you remember all this stuff. It, it can just kick off at any time. And it's crazy. He just wants to rip this all up. So, yeah, Boris... Uh, I've, I've, um, as someone who's half, half English, half Irish, I've never been more ashamed to be English, and it's really turning me off the whole country. And I feel really bad for Northern Ireland and Scotland, who are more pro uh, EU. And I really hope mm -hmm. Scotland gets its independence because I wasn't for it when they first had their referendum. But now I'm like, you can get rid of the Tories basically forever because the SNP have become so dominant lately. Yeah, w why wouldn't you vote for that? Why would you want to be joined at the hip to? Britain or England just driving us off a cliff and mm -hmm. it, it in the same with most politics it's just rich people playing with the fate of our country because that's keep it real M none of the Tories are going to be affected by no deal Brexit pretty much they're too rich yeah it doesn't matter yeah Boris it's not, not going really to affect the rich yeah which is why he wants it to go off the cliff uh, yeah I, I think so so it, it's just a depressing state of affairs and yeah, probably one of the worst times in British politics. People say it's the worst since uh, the Zuez crisis in '56 or World War II. Wow! And I, I think I think it is probably one of the worst times in our history. It's just awful. And as a young person, and and you you guys probably know in Canada, and you probably know in Americans, just the press, the way they smear Jeremy Corbyn. Not saying he's great for Brexit, but just in general, he's my only hope for a lot of things in this country. It's just depressing to get through to people, and even things like the impartial BBC which I think does more damage because it's meant to be impartial and it's seen as impartial, just promoting the Tories all the time, just really annoys me. So yeah, I don't, I try not to think about it sometimes, even though it's coming up October 31st, I'm meant to leave. I'm kind mm -hmm. of like, in my mind, it's it's blocked out. I just don't want to think about don't it. Don't think right about now. it. Well, I, <laughs> yeah. I guess that's the best way. Um, yeah. Chat, I'll open it up to questions from you and uh, real questions, not just constantly telling them how handsome he is because you're going to inflate <laughs> his happened, ego too I'm much. Good. <laughs> Someone did have a question. Oh, Belgium here. Question for my unfortunate comrade. No deal Brexit will be terrible and even tank our Belgian economy. Can I still come over for tea and biscuits though? <laughs> um, in, in terms of like, you, you probably don't want to come to this country anymore, but I think they are doing a special thing for EU people where it, you can come over pretty easily still just for a visit. So mm -hmm. yeah, come over for your tea and biscuits from, uh, I don't know where we're going to get it from these days. I don't know where we even get our biscuits from. We'll get some like disgusting uh, chemical infected American biscuits or something <laughs> for our new trade deal. I have a question for the Cavernacle. When is the next UK election and do you think Labour will win? So the next election will be, if nothing changes, I think 2022, because uh, every five years, mm -hmm. 2017 was our last one. Uh, I doubt it will take that long. It will probably be either if no one knows it's going to happen. So if if it all goes down with Brexit and we don't leave, I think there'll be another election maybe at the end of this year, start of next year. So we'll see. Will Labour win? Uh, it's hard to say. I think the best you can hope for is the Tories losing, which means maybe some sort of Remain coalition can be formed for the government in terms of uh, the SNP have about 40 plus seats. They're the Scottish National Party. And then they're the second biggest, they're the third biggest party. And then you have Labour, which have the second amount. So maybe they could all form a coalition, but 
the polls have been in and out. Boris Johnson has given a, given a bit of a boost to the Tories, which is depressing. But hopefully, you know, he's getting confronted everywhere he goes, getting so much abuse. I just think people should catch on. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. It, it's really, you can't call it, to be honest. It's so hostile and volatile in this country. Will he say Chucky Arila? Arla? Um, Am I saying that right? What, what is he always to say? It's like, will he say Chucky Arla? Chucky, uh, what does that mean? I don't know. I'm guessing Lost but Broken is a movie reference. It's going way over my head. Oh, okay. Um, are you single? Uh, no, I'm, I'm probably one of the most least single people ever. I've been going out with my girlfriend since I was 17. So six, oh, six, wow. six years and eight months. <laughs> oh, so you guys are common so, law then. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> but don't worry, we're not we're not going to get married until we're in our 30s. So we're going go out for like 13 years before. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret to hiding your balding? Hide my board in. Um, <laughs> I was. <laughs> I don't even need to hide it. I think I was just lucky. I was. Um, I don't think my hair. You don't have to answer that seriously. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't. I, don't, I just think my hair is quite thick. I don't think I'm actually going to bald. But at least I can grow a beard. But if I do, I'm not completely screwed. <laughs> um, can we get you to say a quick trans rights? Trans rights. Oh, okay. Uh, what? What one? Does someone say trans rights or trans rights are human rights? Yeah. Trans rights are human rights. There you go. Um, there go. What would be the best leftist solution to Brexit? Oh, this is a good question. Uh, So Jeremy Corbyn is obviously socialist. Socialists don't like the EU in general. So people asked me this before. I've said basically I would take Corbyn government and leave in the EU. I definitely would uh, Mm -hmm. because there's too many problems in this country. And the EU can leave in the EU can be a good thing, but it relies on you promoting um, internal uh, workers. Basically, you need to fill the the gaps left by migrant labour with British workers. Mm-hmm. which is fine whatever I, I don't i don't necessarily you know i'm not against that and you know footballers have been saying with brexit and the changes to the rules of football we can promote more english talent through the top teams because it'll be harder for migrants to come over to play mm-hmm. and the england manager was like well if if, if we have brexit happens we can we can do that the problem is with tories they're not doing that so yeah. we're going to be screwed so we're just going to have a massive deficit of labor and you could also maybe focus your resources internally to make you know a great socialist country but again, that is old school socialist. I don't really like that. I would rather work with the European Union because, you know, socialists, uh, I guess a lot of us, we don't like borders. Mm-hmm. This idea of having this big old uh, massive federal country where we can just move around, work with everyone, same money. Well, we don't, but most of Europe d- d- does. I think that's a better step to achieving what you want rather than be like, nope, everyone, you know, if you don't have a certain skill to this country, get out. We're just mm-hmm. going to focus on ourselves. Um, I'm watching Peaky Blinders at the moment. It kind of, not that necessarily, but Oswald Mosley, uh, obviously Britain's most famous fascist, mm-hmm. says a lot of stuff like this. And I, I think not that it's, it's necessarily a, a link to national socialism because we're a very diverse country now. Mm-hmm. But I don't really like the idea of being like, everyone get out or you can't come here anymore. We're just focusing on ourselves. I don't, I don't like that too much. And obviously people think history's fixed. Mm-hmm. Britain has been at war with most of Europe for most of our history until 1945. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think we, you know, not that it's a certainty, but I wouldn't really want to get hostile with, with a lot of them again. And I don't like the idea of cozying up to the Americans while mm-hmm. shunning the Germans and French, who I think we have uh, a lot more in common with in terms of politics a lot of the time. America, yeah, we had the language, a bit of the, the entertainment culture, but in terms of our politics, I, I don't think we're very, very similar in terms of the European spectrum of politics is a bit better. But left the leftist Brexit, uh, I don't know, really. It's, it's, it's a hard one. It's complicated. It, mm. This is the whole thing with Brexit. It's so complicated. Yes and or no as an answer to the question. It just doesn't fly because how can anyone be so sure when it's just such a complex thing? Mm-hmm. It, it's not like, um, you know, do you want a, a brown bread to be in shops still? Yes or no? It's nothing like that. It's just massive trading block which also acts as like a you know a sort of union like the united states it, it's too complicated for a yes or no which is just the whole issue really <laughs> okay i'll make this one the last one because this one's a really good question that i think yeah. you could definitely answer well is it worth trying to bread pill your former gamer bros asking for myself oh okay because we talk about the gamer thing a lot so yeah um to be honest it, it depends really i think I'm trying to think of the best strategy. I don't know if, if you've got a good answer because I know you, you like gaming as well. And I know your content is uh, is quite good, the gaming stuff that you've done. But basically, I think there is a way in because there are a lot of games 
that are, su- are, are super political, but people don't really realize. So, for example, I've talked a lot on Twitter. I need to make this video. Metal Gear Solid is probably one of the most socialist games you can play. The messages within Metal Gear Solid, on, on top of it's really awful exterior sometimes, like the stuff with Quiet and Metal Gear Solid 5, I super didn't agree with. Mm-hmm. But you won't get another game where you are fighting with uh, socialist revolutionaries in Nicaragua against the CIA mm-hmm. to stop um, America expanding like the nuclear arms trade. You're yeah. not going to get another game which teaches you and reveres Che Guevara mm-hmm. like Metal Gear Solid. And I think through playing things like this, I guess you can put your friends on the path to playing these things and then maybe expand, have a discussion on the topics. I think other games, this game isn't as good, but Mafia 3, I think, is very good for a lot of this political stuff. It, it deals with contemporary racism quite well, even though it's set in 1968. You guys made a video on Bioshock, mm-hmm. which I think could be an interesting discussion about capitalism, but you don't need to frame it that way because obviously... If, if your gamer bro isn't super into politics or is into these, you know, anti SJW politics, you might want to talk about these things. But it's just an interesting conversation you can sort of have. I don't think I'm the best person to talk about it because um, you you were talking about uh, other people who've made better content for getting people in, where, whether it's Fort's line making stuff about Stranger Things, mm-hmm. you know, stuff stuff like this, where you take something people love and just criticize it and kind of help them get around to your viewpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's it's always worth a try. I, I guess it just depends how toxic they are. To be honest, I'm not going to waste my time trying to talk to too many of these PewDiePie fans and try and convince them that I'm right. There's mm-hmm. just no point. Sometimes you got to really um, come around to it on your own. I guess. Uh, mm-hmm. And I made a video about my political evolution where I used I voted conservative when I was 19, mm-hmm. and then now I'm where I am today. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you just need your own space to sort of figure out how much of an idiot you are. To be honest, and be, be, <laughs> I don't know how old this person is. And if your kids, sometimes it's not worth the effort. The person will figure it out when life hits them. Mm-hmm. Like if they love Trump and you're American and I don't know if they 18 or they grow into adulthood, they start paying taxes and they realize this guy is proper screwing me over. Mm-hmm. Then it's your own life experience really. But yeah, sorry, I haven't got a better, better answer to that one. Up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you think. If it's well, I was going to agree with some of the chat. H bomb and I think Jim Sterling. And I why, why are they both British? What's going on here? Uh, are probably two of the best bread tubers for converting. Uh, uh, gamers. Uh, yeah, I, I, lo- yeah. I love I love Jim Sterling. I think yeah. what he does is super smart because mm-hmm. he takes things that all gamers hate, like loot boxes. Like mm-hmm. I think it's pretty universal. Gamers yeah. don't like this. Yeah, and then he applies it to these exist because. In capitalism, you are trying to like nickel and dime every last cent out of your customers, mm-hmm. and that's the problem. It's it's not that you know he's trying to make the case. I know he says he doesn't want government regulation, but he's like you can't just let corporations keep doing this, not mm-hmm. paying taxes, getting a tax credit while they exploit you even more. And it's I think it's super clever what he's doing. I think I think he definitely is the best person at, at this. Uh, that's a good point. As someone I did forget, so yeah, I t- totally agree. Mm-hmm. J- J- Jim is so good, but Jim I don't, don't know if, if you think it's worth maybe on like a personal level trying not just well i think that that's what the question was and yeah yeah um it depends i i don't like i i'm one of those people who had one group of friends when i was in high school and they're kind of pieces of shit and then i (laughs) kind of well you you start to gravitate in later in life towards people who actually have the same sensibilities as you so uh, i don't really have uh, a lot of game of bro friends or any actually um but if i did have them uh i would probably tell them to watch h bomber guy and jim sterling (laughs) that would be my entry my entry point to it but you you wouldn't try and talk to them about it no of course like, i would yeah i, w- I wouldn't be <laughs> that's kind of the the jordan peterson fan thing right it's like oh you need to go read all his books watch all his lectures before you can truly understand you know the ethos yeah, yeah. of what he likes to talk about <laughs> no yeah d- 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 no, d- it's definitely a thing pe- people could try and i think as toxic as that culture is it's such uh, a ripe gateway to bring people back from you know how awful it can make people i think and with Jim, like I'm so happy he's become so big now. Yeah, like he's grown. I remember when I first subscribed to him. He he's always been famous. Okay, in terms of everyone's known who Jim is, mm-hmm. but ha- now he's he has eight hundred and thirty thousand subs. Like he probably will get a million in the next like two years. That's a beautiful and, thing. Yeah, and and, and we, we spoke about how dominant the right wing are, and the biggest bread tubers are like if you could even consider him this, and I it probably would like David Pakman or. Uh, these types of people. Mm, maybe- Pacman's uh, left tube, but he's not bread tube. You got to be anti-capitalist to be bread tube. Okay. And then well, Pac- it- Pacman's a sock dem, but he's a good sock okay. dem. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, he, he he helps if anyone like trans can, they could transition easily from him mm-hmm. through. You know what I mean? Down the but like, yeah, with, with Jim, uh, I just I just love it because he's so unapologetic, which mm-hmm. is just so so re- refreshing. Yeah, he just doesn't give a fuck what he, anyone. <laughs> he goes for the viscera. <laughs> And, um, he, and he, he loves trolling them as well. So yeah, I respect. I get, yeah, he's probably one of my favorite YouTubers actually. <laughs> um, what um, what was I going to say? Do, do you have anything you want to plug? I have to quickly move on to something else. Yeah, no, that's that's totally fine. Um, yeah, there's people like what I'm saying, or they want to check out some more stuff. Just go on my channel, uh, Cavernacle YouTube. Just have a look around if you want. Um, and if you want to follow me on social media, just at the Cavernacle. I got all the domain names because it's just a unique name. So. Yeah, just type in my name and whatever social media and you'll probably find me. 